I don't think now that any member of any American administration would use the word collateral damage again to describe what it does describe, civilian casualties. Those of you who know that expression or who've known how to see through it have done in your way an Orwellian job and you probably without knowing it owe it to Orwell uh, that this is a capacity that you have. But that's the trick in effect. You find a you find a nice name for a nasty thing and you get it spread around by making it seem technical or technological. If I could summarize it in one sentence, that would be it. He was, he was onto that. He knew every time that the Stalin regime said, well, you know, in extraordinary times, extraordinary measures must be taken. He thought, that, that is mass graves. Uh, he knew without being told, um, by reading their own propaganda, that whatever the truth was, the propaganda was lying and it was using nice words for, for, for disgraceful things. This is a trick that should never desert you. You can all do it for yourself. There's no reason not to do it. Interrogate what you read and, and what you're given uh, in that spirit and you'll find it all the time. It's remarkable to me, in fact, that, that he was able to do this and to be considered exceptional for it. But he did, he did stick to it and he did therefore understand how great noble ideas can turn into their opposite. And thus that in 1984 freedom is slavery um, and war is peace and people live with the negation because they believe the, they believe the party or the authority or the dictator who claimed it in the first place and they didn't have the nerve to, to doubt it because if they were wrong, if they had themselves been fooled then what would it make them? I've talked up till now about power and I think I'll stop at this point and invite your questions by just saying this. Power is only what you allow it to be. Very many people put up with political lying and political illusions and, and political propaganda because if they were to denounce it they would have to admit that for many decades they had themselves been fooled, that they had been taken for granted, that they had allowed themselves so to speak, to be deceived. The con man's work is always done for him by the victim. The victim doesn't want to go to the police and say, I've been conned. I was so stupid that I did this. They don't wish to admit it. So in a subtle and deadly way, the dictator can dirty enough people up to make them all complicit in his rule, or I suppose her rule, can, can make them the um, the tortured yet willing masochistic uh, complicit element in his own sadistic mania. Now what you can't necessarily do about power or about authority you can do for yourselves and your fellow readers and fellow students and fellow citizens. You can resolve not to be a citizen like that. You can resolve not to do the work of power for it. You can resolve not to let lies be told in your hearing. You can resolve not to use sloppy language that is euphemism. And then I think, and I, I'll, I'll leave it, I think, like this, you'll realize that the reading of Orwell is not a, a, an exercise in projecting uh, blame on others, but is uh, an exercise in accepting a responsibility for yourself and or for yourselves. And it's for that reason that he'll always be honored and also that he'll always be hated. And I think he wouldn't have had it any other way and as a chronicler of his, um, neither would I. So I'm now your hostage, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being mine for a bit and we'll see if we can exchange the prisoner's dilemma and I'm all yours and thank you for coming again. Actually, I meant to say thank you again for coming but I mean it sort of comes to the same.